understand that there is a struggle. All right, today on Africa Uncensored One on One, we have the pleasure of interviewing Dr. Kiza Besije. Of course, Kiza Besije, well known in the East African region as being a stalwart of the opposition here in Uganda and a beacon for many opposition groups across the continent. Thank you very much for joining us, Dr. Besije. Great pleasure, you're most welcome. The recently concluded election was, some would say, again, just proof that you will never rule this country. Why do you keep fighting? Well, because I'm not fighting to be a ruler. Mm -hmm. uh, the struggle in our country is uh, deeper than just uh, looking for a leadership. Mm -hmm. Because remember, we have never had any leader in this country peacefully hand over power to another. Every leader of our country has bombed his way into office mm -hmm. and similarly bombed out of office. And that means that our country has, since independence, been led by some form of warlords, mm -hmm. people with guns, not, leaders, not uh, leadership arising out of the will of the people of Uganda. Mm -hmm. And that is why we have very serious governance issues, because there is no accountability to the people of Uganda. Yeah. And... Um, Whenever elections are held, they are held as a facade, just to create the impression that there has been participation of people. But at the end of the day, that participation is completely ignored, it is abused. Indeed, that is why Mr. Museven, who is in office, started a war after an election. Mm -hmm. Mr. Museven went to the bush after the 1980 elections, in which he was a candidate, challenging the credibility mm. of the election. But weren't you with him in that bush war? Yes, yes I was. And so that challenge, the credibility of the election mm -hmm. has been replicated in all the elections that we've had. In fact, uh, this last election was my fourth uh, participation in, mm. um, in the presidential election. The first two we challenged in the Supreme Court. And indeed, the Supreme Court, unanimous by unanimous decision, agreed that the election was not conducted in accordance with the law. So what we are struggling for is the assertion, the reassertion of people, people's will, to make sure that we are in a country where the people's will is respected, mm -hmm. where citizens are masters, not subjects, as they are today, and where leaders are servants and not masters, mm -hmm. as they are today. So it's a struggle for liberation. It's not just a struggle for leadership. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is why we cannot give up because giving up means giving up on the country mm -hmm. that the country will remain controlled by a coterie of gunmen who will run it the way they like abuse its resources abuse its people and uh, uh, lead eventually to catastrophe of failed states like we have had uh, in our region mm -hmm. so this is a fundamental struggle and uh, uh, it has already cost a lot of lives of our people. The Museveni war alone led to the death of more than half a million people. That's how deep the betrayal mm -hmm. of Mr. Museveni is to the country because he came to power walking on half a million dead people yeah. only to do exactly what he started the war about. Yeah. So the guarantor for the kind of change we are fighting for is not us, the leaders. It is the people themselves who, have, who are empowered, who uh, are organized, assert 
they are with. That is the struggle in which I'm involved. All right, but some would say that the 500,000 dead people that Museveni walked over to, to enter the presidency after that war was a walk that he walked alongside you and that you were also part of the foundation for the kind of violent leadership Absolutely, that you're talking about. Absolutely, and that's about. why I carry greater responsibility to my mind than other citizens who did not participate in that war. Because having seen indeed the kind of suffering, the destruction, the death that our people uh, had to suffer, and we perpetuate the same situation that caused that suffering mm -hmm. would be, I think, the greatest form of treason, mm -hmm. which I have rejected yeah. at a personal level. He's a dictator. That's what he's chosen mm. uh, to project himself as. I don't think he even protests uh, being referred to as such because uh, he prides in uh, his military might as the source of his power. He's been uh, bragging to our country that he came to power through the furnace. Nobody can remove him except through the furnace. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever there is a political impasse, he puts on his military uniform, even when uh, he claims to have uh, uh, retired from the military, you know that because our constitution does not allow uh, serving military people to uh, contest for leadership of a country. Uh, but even today, whenever there is a political problem, he puts on his um, military fatigues, carries a rifle as a, as a president. You see him with a sling uh, on his shoulder carrying a rifle. So I think uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a choice he has made for himself to lead in a Machiavellian way. Yeah. Uh, where the end justifies the means and um, where he prefers to be feared than to be respected. Uh, I hope even in the dying stages of his uh, leadership, I hope he could uh, reflect on it and um, salvage whatever you can salvage by way of uh, uh, redirecting um, his effort towards having a national dialogue mm. that can lead to a peaceful transition, peaceful change in power. Um, in Kenya, you know, one could look up to the experience of uh, um, um, President Moy, um, who exercised a lot of power, uh, was controversial in similar ways, but eventually um, he is credited for having allowed the country to continue. No leader of our country has, stepped, has ever stepped down willfully. He has regrettably just put on the shoes of the former dictators. So we, it's incumbent upon us as a people to struggle and stop him. The difference between what we are doing and what was done in the past is that struggles of the past were violent, were procured through violent means, using guns, fighting wars, what we are doing differently now is to scrupulously undertake a non-violent struggle. Mm -hmm. A struggle that is based on simply rallying people, informing people, organizing people, so that 
they can use the power of their numbers to assert their will through either stopping to cooperate with the regime, which is a very powerful weapon. So it's going to be a struggle, and it's an ongoing struggle. It's a tough struggle. Uh, indeed, some of our people have already been killed in this struggle. Many are languishing in prisons. I myself have been arrested uncountable times, charged with all kinds of offenses. Uh, my younger brother is dead. Uh, they, they, so there are costs to every struggle. Mm -hmm. But we believe that it's a struggle that cannot be defeated where people are involved. And it's a struggle that once it is won, cannot be reversed. Yeah. You, you are the champion of this struggle currently. Could you also be the stumbling block? I mean, you've run four times. you failed four times. Is there leadership within the opposition that can well, replace you to take it Well, as I have just pointed forward? out to you, yeah. we don't believe that elections organized by a military dictator will remove the dictator. We, therefore, our participation in elections is not because we believe that those elections are going to remove the dictator and have a new system. We simply use elections as an opportunity, as a platform to um, broaden, to deepen the struggle. Uh, because, as you can see indeed, uh, when there is an election, the whole world is focused on Uganda, mm. and therefore uh, there is more res restraint on the part of the regime in terms of stopping us from doing what we can to influence mm -hmm. the population. Now, as you will see, it's difficult to leave my home. An election, and, and rightly so, is, is a time when the, the entire world is focused on Uganda and on any country. But what we've seen globally in other elections around the world, the election of uh, Donald Trump with Le Pen in France, with this move towards the right and nationalism across the world with partners who perhaps would force that restraint from Uganda, is that they'll be looking inward now and probably through the next two election cycles, leaving you isolated. How does that affect your fight? I don't think, I think it may affect it positively. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what governments abroad uh, are doing. At the end of the day, change in Uganda, change in Africa will be one by ourselves, by Ugandans, by Africans, not by foreigners. Mm. It helps if foreigners don't interfere in harmful ways. Unfortunately, most of the time they interfere in harmful ways because understandably they are serving the interests of their people, mm. not of our people. So the relationship with Africa and especially with uh, African Thailands has been in terms of extracting our resources uh, by colluding with the dictators, corrupt dictators, mm -hmm. to take away our resources that would have benefited uh, our people. So they are, the interaction has hitherto been um, harmful mm. more than helpful. I am not saying that we can live in isolation, but I'm saying that maybe if they pay less attention to us, we may fare better than when they pay a lot of attention to us because mm -hmm. their attention is not aimed at improving our lot. Their attention is in, aimed at improving their lot. Mm. How about the Africans in the region? President Kenyatta has a great relationship with uh, President uh, Museveni, the same with Magufuli, the same with Kagame. Do you feel that 
as Africans, your movement, your struggle has been betrayed by the people closest to you? Well, uh, again, I think the primary responsibility of any community is uh, born by itself. In this case, by Ugandans, I think it would be um, unhelpful to shift mm. our blame to others to look, uh, say we would be better if uh, President uh, Kenyatta or Magufuli or other people behaved differently. I think uh, we must uh, take our first and due responsibility for what happens here. But having said that, yes, it quite obviously would help if regional platforms, regional fora, regional arrangements would uphold the principles uh, that are even contained in the documents that um, espouse these institutions. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you know, just like what you are seeing in Europe, there is great detachment between the institutions of the states, the institutions of the regions, from the people of the region. Mm -hmm. The state and the governments are doing their, their own things, uh, and the people are, you know, um, marginal. Mm -hmm to those processes that they are involved in. Uh, so even when there is talk in East Africa about integration, it's integration of the governments. Of the leaders. Frankly, mm. not integration of the people. The struggle in Kenya, just like the struggle in Uganda, is still the regaining of our citizenship mm. because after independence we, we are no longer subjects of the Queen of England we became subjects of the rulers who inherited the instruments of the Queen of England and so that is a similar struggle going on in Kenya going on all over Africa but quite obviously, there are some differences in how we have progressed. Because in Kenya, we have, you have never had the military intervening directly in the politics. Whereas here, it has been violence, as I have pointed out, all through. So we have guns all over the country in all kinds of hands. We have a violent culture. Uh, we have um, um, uh, many people, armies that have been disbanded, which are in villages, every regime comes with its army. Uh, so we are dealing with a more delicate situation uh, than I think our colleagues in Kenya are dealing with. Well, I think that is quite distinctly a possibility, uh, but it doesn't uh, cause, you know, doesn't cause me sleepless nights. Mm. Uh, because, uh, first of all, whether they kill me or don't kill me, I'm going to die. Uh, so death is a fact of life. <laughs> and so far, I consider that I have already done uh, fairly well. I am 60 years. <laughs> <laughs> so even if they don't kill me, I don't have very many years uh, to hang around. Mm. But, uh, the, you know, it's true that anybody challenging a dictatorship of the type that we are challenging here indeed faces mortal danger. Uh, but um, it should not serve as a, a source of paralysis. Uh, because then other, that's the intention of all dictatorships, to cause fear so that people do not challenge it. Um, Dr. Basija, you, you spoke about 
Museveni as a dictator, Museveni as a person who has captured power. But this same Museveni was a person who you were brothers in arms with at one point. Even today, do you see shades of the man that you fought alongside? Do you see any positive traits about him that you can say you can appeal to since opposition doesn't seem to be working in your favor at least at this point? Well, I don't know the last segment of your question of opposition not working mm. in my favor because uh, how would opposition work in my favor? Uh, uh, the whole country is opposition actually now. Uh, this, this is why we are even contesting what happened in the last elections. Because mm -hmm. even with all the rigging, we won the election and we have evidence of that. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm surrounded by soldiers so that we don't uh, indeed uh, assert the will of the people. Um, so quite clearly, Mr. Museveni uh, is illegitimate. He's in opposition to the people. You think? Yes, quite completely in opposition to the people. Um, though he may be holding the reins of power uh, for the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but I think back to the other segment of your question regarding what may be positive in Museven. You see, uh, when we are talking about public service and leadership, doesn't matter, you know, whether you, you are present in, in your relations with others, what, what is critical are the outcomes, whether the people you are leading are getting better or worse. I think that is the yardstick that uh, we would want to use. I have told, in fact, himself is, I think, one of his, role, his best judges is himself. He not only said, he put it in writing, that the problem of Africa are leaders who overstay in power. <laughs> <laughs> he himself with his hand. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Now he's more than 30 years. He's now trying to amend the constitution to remove even the uh, limit on the age so that he can contest even when the age that is restricted by the constitution comes, you know. Uh, so, you know, that is uh, uh, what he has given to the country. Mm -hmm. He has not helped it to make a transition that you can have one leader hand over to another. He has created actually a more divided country in terms of ethnicity, in terms of religious conflicts. There is more conflict than uh, uh, what he found. Uh, you have uh, the economy on its knees. Uh, education on its knees, health care on its knees, infrastructure on its knees, corruption in the sky, you know. So um, this is how I would want to judge him. Mm -hmm. Every human being quite obviously has some positives. Uh, and I have no doubt that Mr. Museveni has positives. But as a country, we should not be distracted to look at other areas. We should be, because he's in the public role uh, to get outcomes for the public. Mm. And that's where my criticism hinges, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the, the regime um, in which, as you have rightly said, I was a part of at the beginning, was promising mm. at the beginning, you know, uh, reviving the economy, uh, pushing back the AIDS scourge, which has uh, rebounded, um, you know, uh, 
reviving infrastructure which has decayed you know there there were, there were initial uh, mm. benefits but like he uh, rightly observed once you overstay <laughs> you, you mess up <laughs> what yeah. you had uh, tried to do that was positive as an observer of ugandan politics there are many opposition parties there are many people in opposition yet none of them seem to get the kind of treatment or maltreatment that is handed down to you at one point you even came to kenya to seek treatment after you were being tear gassed and beaten why you is is this is this personal absolutely not and of course there has been an attempt um, or there was an attempt i think it has since dissipated but there was an attempt to project it as if it was a personal conflict, mm -hmm. as if it was a personal disagreement between me and Mr. Museveni, and there, there were spins of, of it has something to do with our love relationships and things like that. Absolutely not. And indeed, uh, what has happened uh, along the way has helped to completely dis uh, dis that. Uh, kind of um, um, spin to the conflicts that we have here because uh, first uh, the points on which we disagree we have projected them very clearly right from the word go mm -hmm. that these are the points of disagreement um, how to manage the transition to a democratic dispensation from the war that we had fought. That was main contention, and that has never happened. And then what arose out of it, of not being accountable, the corruption, the mismanagement of state institutions and so on, in fact, the killing of state institutions to the strengthening of just the one person. Um, so these areas of contention have been very clear. Now, what has helped in the intervening period is that uh, other people have come up from time to time to challenge him the way I have challenged him. Mm -hmm. And his response to them has been exactly the same as uh, he's been responding to me. The only difference is that they have not uh, held their ground. Mm -hmm. You saw the Prime Minister Mbabazi just the other day, who was a stalwart of the regime. When he chose to go out, he was tear gassed. <laughs> uh, he's still, I think, uh, uh, trying to recover from <laughs> that situation. So yeah. it's not that it's not that it's directed at me and it's not intended even for me as such what they do to me is not primarily intended for me it's intended simply to send a chilling message to the others that uh, you know if you say this one is your leader this is what is happening to your leader yeah. what is happening to me is nothing different from what happens elsewhere in the world to those who challenge dictatorships. 